OMAC lids. Welcome to the 100th video from Howler Mouse. And uh, I tell you what, the last video I made announcing what I wanted to do in the 100th video and asking for the uh, you know, questions for a little Q&A session uh, got a whole lot more than I was expecting. And uh, I probably want to split this up into two videos. So it'll probably be 100th and then the other 100th. We'll, we'll kind of cheat there a little bit. And uh, this this video we're going to go through as you know thoroughly and as quickly as I can. Uh, four pages worth of questions. So you know, buckle down. And in the next video, I want to do uh, shout outs to viewers and recommend other channels and uh, probably a little uh, contest announcement for a prize. If you saw the video before this one, you'll know what the prize is. <clears throat> okay, so let's just jump right in there so we don't waste any time. Okay, <coughs> excuse me. First question from Captain Cummings. He asked, how many books do I have? I sat here and I kind of did the math. And uh, right now, I've got anywhere from ten to twelve thousand comic books. Uh, that's no exaggeration. And uh, actually, over the years, I've probably had more than that. And uh, I'll probably cover something here in a minute to, to go over that. Um, we're going down here to Constant Bromstar, and he asks, uh, "What do you think the best superhero licensed product is?" And, and you know, I, put, I gave this a little bit of thought, but I didn't really have to think too hard. I had a whole bunch of joke products I was going to come on because there's been some lame stuff that came out and some superhero licensed stuff that somebody didn't really think through. So I got, you know, it wasn't really hard to decide this one. So I got one of my boxes out. Um, and basically, I think the best products are anything to do with... Uh, the Batmobile, okay, uh, and what I like the most is this company Corgi came out with, uh, there's the uh, Joker Mobile from the 50s, uh, what else do I have here, my favorite, the uh, classic Batmobile from the 60s from the TV show, um, I haven't had these out in a while, yeah, here's the... Ooh, it's falling apart. So this was a model uh, kit that came out with several of them. It's the original, like, uh, I guess it would be the Studebaker Batmobile. Complete with thin. i to put that back together. Uh, oh, the motor's falling out. i got to fix that back. But uh, these are die-cast metal uh, Batmobile from the 60s. There's a patent on this. Um assorted Hot Wheel Batmobiles. Okay, let me hurry up through those. So this one was nice. This is the Batmobile from the 80s. Go there off there. Let's see if I got any more in here. Ah, oh, the classic Batboat. You know, I've got them assorted sizes and things. You know, more Batmobiles. Oh, God, here we go. Uh, it was a gift set. There's a Batmobile on the bottom. Each of the villains had a Batmobile. Not a Batmobile, but their own Hot Wheels car. Let's see what else. Uh, that's all I got in this box and stuff. So, uh, basically, you know, that's it. Little animal man. been in this box in a while going off track here that's some kingdom come figures but anyway basically the batmobile anything batmobile i think are the best uh superhero licensed product out there and this is just one box i've got some other batmobiles laying around here somewhere Let me get all these put back in. all right oh yeah, yeah. bat phone <laughs> all right Hell is for blogs and Warzone Spider kind of asked some questions that uh, kind of matched up, but you know, what's going down here? It says if you can swap uh, a DC hero and villain uh, for Marvel ones, 
who would you pick, you know, and vice versa. So I'm assuming this means if I could transplant, uh, trade a hero and a villain to one universe, back to the other, and two more to the other universe, what would they be? First of all, I would, I would take uh, Doctor Doom and, and Spider-Man and put them in the uh, DC universe because, you know, they just dropped the ball on Doctor Doom and Spider-Man, in my opinion, for a long time. So let's, let's get them in there and let Doom mess some people up. And plus, uh, I've got the big Marvel treasury from like 1980 where they had the second uh, Superman and Spider-Man meeting and, and Doctor Doom and the Parasite were the main villains in that. And Doctor Doom just messed Superman up right off the bat and uh, you know, it made sense and it was like, oh wow, Superman's finally got a villain. It's, that's how I felt about it. And then for uh, the Marvel Universe, I would uh, take Superman and Darkseid and put them in the Marvel Universe. Um, I mean, if you're going to do this, let's take the big guns. It's, you know, Spider-Man's more or less the hero for Marvel and Superman's the hero for you know DC and that's my opinion let's, let's switch them let's take the big guys switch them out put them in there don't mess around with this then Darkseid is a villain you know I think I would have him be sort of a metaphor for Kirby's vengeance upon Marvel you got a Kirby character coming back to a universe that you know Jack Kirby helped create and he could be you know inside joke is that he would be the voice for Kirby. He would come in. Darkseid would just waste the Avengers right away. Darkseid of the new gods would, in my opinion, take out Thor of the old gods. And you're going to have to have the big, the big guns, the big Kirby creations come in to actually be the ones to fight Darkseid. That'd be your Eternals, uh, the Inhumans, uh, the Deviants. Um, and I think Darkseid would be eyeballing going after the Celestials. I mean, it'd just be a big Kirby fest. You know, you'd have the, in my opinion, the the lost great Kirby creation returning home to the House of Ideas is, is how I feel about that. So, I mean, let's make it epic if we're going to do it. Um, I think Warzone Spider kind of asked that question, too. All right, we got, uh, what would be, from Hell is for Blogs, what would be my ideal lineup for the Avengers? The whole thing with these teams, he asked, and he also asked about what would be my ideal um, team for the Justice League. And my whole deal is, is that I've sort of, uh, you know, I think I commented on this before somewhere, something like that. But my whole, my whole deal is, is that if you're going to make super teams, you know, who are you going to have backing you up? I mean, who are you really going to do it? I mean, let's 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 get off the idea of trying to like find characters that can play off each other for story dynamics and drama, stuff like that. I mean. It's the Avengers. I mean, let's get the big guns out. I'd go with the Hulk, the Thing, Hercules, Colossus, uh, Molecule Man, Thor, She-Hulk, Thundra, Silver Surfer, and Gabriel the Airwalker. For the Justice League, my team would be uh, Superman, Captain Marvel, mon -El, Ultra Boy, Supergirl, Captain Adam, Captain Adam in uh, Kirby of Atlas. And that's just off the top of my head. But I mean, you go in, go in there and get the big guns. I mean, let's let's have somebody that's just you're not going to mess with. Okay, and he asked about uh, Hell is for Blogs. Asked about my favorite supporting character in uh, in in comics. And uh, for Marvel, you know, I'm in the Marvel and DC. For Marvel, I've always had an um, an affection. Affection, not infection. Affection for uh, Agatha Harkness. For you don't know who she is, uh, she popped up um, somewhere in the Fantastic Four in the 90s. And she was going to be a nanny to Franklin Richards. Franklin Richards. She's going to be a nanny. And you find out she's a witch. Uh, I always just loved that character. She looked like an old granny. White hair, real thin. Had the shawl over her, um, over her shoulders and, and had her little black cat. And next thing you know, somebody popped up, you know, put Franklin Richards in danger, man. And she's like whipping out hellfire and, uh, you know, really gross witch magic, you know, bodily fluids, I'm sure, involved. But yeah, I've always liked her. And for, for DC, I, I consider them supporting characters. I don't care if they were the hosts of, uh, each one had their own comic and they were host form, but they were supporting characters in the old game and Sandman. Uh, Kane and Abel with the hoot owl haircuts uh absolutely love those guys anytime they pop up in the story and stuff um they're just uh i really enjoy it 
Okay, moving on here. Now, Ghost Critic. Some really good questions here, and I, I might end up going on a rant here in a minute, so be prepared. If I had flashing lights that said Spider-Man rant coming up, you know, I'd, you know, I'd, I'd be doing it. So get ready, and and there may be some cursing. You have been warned. Okay, this question was: What title would I write, and what would I do with it? Now I want to do a DC and a Marvel one, and let me jump into to the first one. Is just, uh, you know, really. You know my kind of thing <clears throat> in the uh, Silver Age and all the way up in, into the 80s Justice League they had Superman on there and they would always have Superman taken out it'd be somebody would have a uh, red uh, solar radiation to take him out and you know he'd have to be coming and be saved you always have uh, kryptonite pop up and be magic you know I mean it just it was really contrived a lot of the ways they took Superman out of the picture and he's in the Justice League and then at the same time you would read his book and Superman is, is moving so fast fixing things he's talking to a villain and in between words in a sentence he's you know flying around and he's using the super science and he was shooting a little heat vision there and, and, and you know what is the point of him being part of a team when in, in reality uh, Superman reality he could probably take out everybody and everything he didn't really need the Justice League so as a kid, I sort of went the uh, other way with this. I, for, I, had, I had the notion, that after reading the Justice League book, and I'd be reading some of these old Superman books, I kind of got the idea that he just didn't want to hurt his, friend, his friend's feelings. You know, he wanted them to be useful. He didn't want to come in there and, and do everything for everybody. So what I would do is I would write this story to where it would be Superman's point of view, and you're revisiting those great old Gardner Fox stories. Or this old uh, Gary Conway, you know, the, the 80s uh, Justice League, I think Gary Conway wrote. And, I mean, I've got actual stories in my head of, you know, where Superman's got the solar radiation on him and they've got him, you know, crucified and all this stuff. And what would happen is that you would re, these t stories would be retold through Superman's eyes. And you would find out that he was laying back. He was playing possum. And at, while he was doing this, at the same time, he was watching out for everybody. This is why nobody really got killed and stuff. And, uh, you know, and he would be doing what he did in the old Silver Age Superman books. He would be using the super speed in between sentences or heat, and you never knew he moved. Or it would be a little flash of heat vision here. Because if you notice, whenever superheroes die, it never really happens when Superman's around. He may be on his way, but they never really die if he's around. You know, uh, I mean, just with my reading and my recall. So why would Superman do this? Okay, Superman's lonely. He needs to have friends. He needs to be around other people who are in costumes too. And the perfect example, what I'm talking about, is an Alan Moore Swamp Thing in the early 20s. It's got the Justice League on the cover and just shows how powerful he was. You know, Firestorm and a lot of them were flipping out because the uh, Floronic Man has made all the plants increase their oxygen output. And Superman's like, well, you want me to count all the oxygen molecules? It won't take me but a minute. Okay? Why would a guy like that really be on a team? Why would a Justice League team even exist if it's like that? And we explore why Superman does that. Now, here's where the conflict would come in. They find out. And they're just sort of like made feel really inferior. And they get really mad at Superman for doing this. Now, the Marvel book that I would do. <clears throat> is um, Spider-Man and the whole thing with Spider-Man is I would just rewrite 98% of Spider-Man comic books that came out in the last 30 years and here's where the rant goes on uh, when Marvel started out and the way I read the books Peter Parker was still on the outside of this Marvel Universe that I was making Peter Parker was one of us Peter Parker was the main character. The book was called Spider-Man, but it was called it was about Peter Parker. Okay, <clears throat> and the way it was written is that him being Spider-Man could be like a metaphor for addiction or something. Every time he put on that suit, it messed up Peter Parker's life. His uncle Ben was killed because he put on that Spider-Man suit. Okay. 
his Spider-Man suit in his mind would give Aunt May a heart attack if he, she found out. And, and when Spider-Man started interacting with Fantastic Four, or he'd run across the Hulk and stuff, it's like we were, he was one of us. We were seen, and he was reacting, and he was seeing things the way we would have. And that's what made this book special. This was lightning in a bottle. This was the lab accident that was magic, in my opinion. Okay? And you don't hear me talk a lot about Spider-Man, and, and you're about to see why. So, I mean, let's, let's look at everything. You know, Spider-Man, he got a release. Peter Parker got a release. The book was about Spider-Man. When the Green Goblin went after Spider-Man, he didn't go after Spider-Man. He went after Peter. He made it personal. Hey, you son of a bitch, I got your girlfriend. And he kills her. He knew his secret identity, so he messed with Spider-Man. One of the greatest Spider-Man stories ever told was the kid that the boy that collected Spider-Man, and the kid was dying, and he even pulled bullets out of a brick wall that Spider-Man had dodged and everything like that, and he got to meet Spider-Man. Well, it's still not about Spider-Man because at the end of the story, the kid got to meet Peter Parker. He revealed his identity to him. It's Peter Parker. Um, let's see if I can keep my train of thought here going because I've got other examples. But what I think happened is I think it was like 30 years ago. They introduced the Black Cat. And the Black Cat was dating Spider-Man. And when Spider-Man took off his uh, mask and revealed that he was Peter Parker, she was just she was just horrified. She didn't want Peter. She wanted Spider-Man. And to me, that is the point that Spider-Man started going downhill. That's when they made Spider-Man a character. Okay? And I can go on and on with other examples. We've got a lot of questions going here. But the whole fact that the book sort of went downhill after that, in my opinion, really makes me mad. This was Peter Parker. He was one of us. He was just a kid like all of us. It made no sense. And the reason things kept messing up is relationships. Gwen, Mary Jane. I mean, this this book was it was one of a kind. And it, Spider-Man was on the side. Spider-Man was the addiction. Spider-Man was what messed everything up. In the great Steve Ditko story, like in 32 or 33, where Spider-Man's down in the sewer and he's got the great big huge steel wall on t holding him down. He spends the whole issue thinking about Aunt May and getting it, lifting it off. That's the monkey on his back that he's fighting, you know. And uh, Spider-Man, every time he tried to do good, spot being Spider-Man's what messed him up. And we're talking about a lot of stuff that came up. In the 60s, it was perfect. 70s, it was perfect. We had the Spider-Mobile in the 70s with this book, and it was still great. And then it's when the Black Cat came in. Spider-Man didn't really ever really say day. It was Peter. Peter making, you know, using his chemistry, using his brain, being Peter. You know, whenever he tried to use his fists, you know, he, he'd get his butt kicked. But he would sit there and think and use his webbing to make boxing gloves to fight somebody in a multi man or something. You know, I mean, it was Peter. So they make the they they turn it into Spider-Man. Okay, you see what I'm saying? It stopped being about Peter, who happened to be Spider-Man. Spider-Man was what was ruining Peter's life, but he was addicted to it. They make it about Spider-Man with the black cat, and this is where the book started going downhill. This is where they lost track. They stopped making it about Peter and started making it about the superhero Spider-Man. Spider-Man was a loner. That's like addiction. Okay, he never really joined anything. He felt inferior if he didn't get that big high from being Spider-Man. He, he didn't join teams. Um, he, that's why he would have team ups and stuff. Um, you know, just, he, he, you know, his persona would really change. And then when they made it about Spider Man, this is where the book got got messed up. You know, ninety eight percent of what they've done since then has been garbage. Uh, so what was a saving grace? Um, honestly, you know, it, it it was Venom. Venom came in. That was the high point because Eddie Brock hated Peter. The symbiote suit hated Peter. It was about Peter again. Peter Parker should never have gotten married. Uh, Peter Spider-Man should have ruined it. Uh, everything he should have, he they ended up doing with him, it should never have happened because being Spider-Man messed that up. And uh, I can go on and on, but the fact that they came out with Spider Island, I'm, I'm so against that because it's about Spider-Man and, and it's about those power powers and everybody becomes Spider-Man when this book is supposed to be about Peter, you know, look, look, look at what, you know, Civil War, Peter takes off his mask, and, and I know they, and they undid it, they, they've bastardized Peter Parker, in my opinion, they've just crapped on him, you know, and if you don't believe it's 
still not going on. Uh, check out uh, what's that book? It came out, it's Amazing Spider-Man 677 this month, with the horrific art that I flipped through in the comic book shop. There's no excuse for it. And if I sit here, I can go on and on and on, and point out stuff that they did, because they stopped making it about Peter and decided it's going to be about Spider-Man. Marvel's opinion was, you put Spider-Man on the book, it's going to sell no matter what we do. Well, you no, I did well. Moving on. Um, you're having a dinner party. I can invite five people from the comic book industry. They can be alive or dead. Who's it going to be? Honestly, in my opinion, I want two people there. And I want five minutes for them to be alone. Uh, no consequences. It's going to be William Gaines. And it's going to be Frederick Wortham, the man who wrote Seduction of Innocent. And William Gaines was the man that was running EC Comics. So for you comic book people out there, you know exactly what I'm saying. And what is your most prized comic book related possession? Uh, comic book related possession. I am not sure. I mean, there's a few things that I have that are really, really uh, sentimental to me. But uh, I don't know. I thought I had that one figured out. Actually, it's probably going to be the Watchmen movie, just because um, a lot of people talk about the Watchmen being an important book to the American like that. That book is really personal to me because it taught me a lot on how to look at comics. Uh, you know, it's not so much the grim and greediness, it's that, you know, this was the pinnacle of the comic book art form. Uh, so probably that Watchmen movie and the fact that it got made and it got adapted as well as it, it did in the ultimate cut I have, the full director's cut movie. Um, <clears throat> and I, I really don't have a lot of complaints with it at all. I'm one of the people that actually thought they did a, a, a pretty good job considering there's just no way they could really do the comic. So, you know, we'll leave it at that. Okay, made me think.